What's up guys, Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily and today is feeding day so we're not going to be handling too many snakes but I will tell you this, there's a lot of ovulations going on, there's a lot of girls that are showing some signs that they're going to lay eggs and I know a lot of people ask me, how do you know if a snake's going to lay eggs? How do you know if it's ovulating? And sometimes you know, you don't miss, you miss these things, you don't catch them but today Pablo's been on the ball, he's caught some good stuff so we're going to show you what ovulations look like, I'm going to show you what the that deep ridge that a lot of these snakes get right before they lay eggs is it all about and just, you're gonna see some cool stuff that we got and that's what it's all about because the breeding season is really you know, we're in the heart of it at this point we're gonna see a lot of eggs on the ground over the next couple weeks and we're seeing some uh, incub uh, incubated eggs in the incubator that are gonna start hatching so I would say over the next two weeks things are gonna get very busy here and you're gonna see a lot more videos from me on a regular basis Right now, we've been trying to get the three videos a week out. We'll probably try to go for five videos a week once the eggs start coming fast, so I can show you guys what's what's being produced. As you know, I'm an open book. I'm full transparency. I don't hide anything. You're going to see what I got. I also have an amazing snake, an amazing boa coming next week from my Ken, uh, friend uh, Kenny Sato or Sato, and you're going to love this thing. I can't wait to show it to you. All right, let's take a look and see what we got. All right, we wanted to show you this girl. A lot of times people can't spot uh, right before a female is gonna lay some eggs. And you see this nice big ridge here that's forming? That's usually an indication that she's probably very close to laying a clutch of eggs. She hasn't eaten in a bunch of weeks. She's been sitting on the hot spot. We just cleaned her tub, so she's a little irritated. But, you know, they get very uncomfortable right before they're gonna lay. Now this female is an interesting story because She's a lesser clown, but she's got a new gene in there, okay? A gene that had not been identified before. Uh, the Barkers are the ones who originally originated this gene. I don't know if they ever proved it out. I bought this girl from a friend of mine, Mike, at Reptile Ranch, when he was selling his collection. I bred her two years ago, and I produced a really nice new gene female and new gene male. The male I bred back to her this year, and I'm hoping, since the new gene was definitely transferable in the first generation, it must be an incomplete dominant. And it really whacks pattern a lot. Changes colors. So I'm wondering that we might be able to hit on a super form of that gene, and maybe we can even name it once we have it. Lesser seems to work really well with it. The great thing is that the, the, the male that I bred to her, her son is a visual clown, so everything will be clown. Uh, obviously, there's potential for a super lesser in here, which I really don't want to do, but I, I want to get that new gene into this so badly that I risked it. <laughs> and I think that we're going to see something crazy. I'm hoping we're going to see a crazy super form of something that we've never seen before. The, the, I believe that the son and the father was a lesser spot nose pastel new gene clown. Um, we'll see. It's impossible for me to know at this point exactly what's going to happen until we get this clutch laid. And then obviously 60 days later, we're going to get some eggs hatching. So fingers crossed on this girl. Let's see if Pablo's right. I think in the next week, we're going to see some eggs. Now, this is interesting because this girl is in the process of shedding, although she probably just has some stuck shed on her. She has a really big ovulation. I don't know if you can really see it here. I mean, this is this bulge is huge. I don't want to disturb it too much because when they're ovulating, they're really uncomfortable because they got like all these follicles lined up. They're right outside the oviduct. They're trying to go right through into the oviduct. It's like probably it's probably comparable to passing her eggs when she when she actually lays, and it's probably a very uncomfortable type of situation. So I don't even want to take her out to remove that stuck shed on her head right there because she just is that uncomfortable. This inter this is an interesting pairing too. This is a hypohet pied female that I bred to my Orange Dream Ultramel pie that's had hypo. So we're gonna produce hopefully some more hype Orange Dream hypo pies that everything will be head Ultramel. So that's the goal. Let's see what we got. We probably have, you know, another 40 days or so before she actually lays something. So, but that's a nice ovulation right there. This girl is another behemoth. <laughs> She's huge. This is Orange Dream Ultra Mel, uh, female that I have here that's uh, Het Cryptic. Produced her a bunch of years ago. She's just enormous. 
she's just you can see she's uncomfortably big <laughs> look at that look at that belly i'm hoping she's got a lot of eggs in her we bred her to a really really nice um what did we breed her to oh the oh this is the leopard blackhead ultra male we bred her to so we're trying to i'm not even worried about the cryptic at this point i wanted to produce leopard blackhead orange dream ultra males i just think they're going to be beautiful i really i really do and once again i've told you this project is a great project because these snakes eat this female is not that old at 18 months she produced her first litter uh clutch and now she's two years in a row gonna probably produce uh, because they're just they never stop eating i don't know they they never like a lot of ball pythons will go off food she very rarely goes off food except right before she's gonna you know lay a clutch so excited about this one all right this is what we'd love to see hugging that water ball probably pre-ovulation here as well uh probably any day she's enormous too this was this was the female that kind of started it all for me that i got from vin russo this is in pinstripe ultra male female that actually turned out that she was head cryptic uh, without me knowing and that's where i got cryptic into my ultra male projects from her so we we bred her again this year she's a core i love pinstripe and ultra male looks so real it, it's just a beautiful beautiful combination we bred her to a really interesting we kind of went off off topic so to speak on this one we bred her to a banana cinnamon hurricane possible woma it's 50 percent head clown so if this if this boy proves out head clown, we should have twenty five percent of the babies should be Kryptons because they would be that clown cryptic allelic combination, and then we're going to get some hurricane into that and some cinnamon. In other words, darken this stuff up a little bit here, and everything would be head ultra male. So it's kind of a, a weird combination, but I wanted to get hurricane into this whole project. So. I thought that this would be a, a cool, just almost like a test run to see what we can do and hopefully prove out that maybe that male is indeed head clown. Here's another really big girl. This is my Orange Dream Super Enchi Red Stripe Fire Yellow Belly female who produced some amazing babies this past season. Um, we re-paired her up with uh, a male from last year, which was in... Enchi, pinstripe, red stripe, yellow belly, orange dream. <laughs> so as you can imagine, we're going to produce some crazy stuff. Uh, she's looking pretty thick. I see those scales stretching out pretty crazy. So I'm uh, expecting probably a clutch from her very shortly. I think over the next three or four weeks, we're going to see a lot of eggs on the ground here. Here's one of my favorite females, GHI Mojave Banana Pastel. One of the first, actually, one of the first real good babies I ever produced. She's given me two clutches. She, you know, she's small, but she doesn't really need to be big. She's always produced clutch, decent clutches for me, four or five eggs at a small size. She wasn't eating for quite a while after she delivered her last clutch, which was late in last season, 2021. So she's been hitting the medium rats again. So she probably, I'll probably pair her up, you know, in the next, you know, maybe two weeks. She'll probably go late in the season again, but she always goes late. So, okay, look, look at this. This girl, when she was born, was purple. Now, obviously, because, you know, ball pythons get a little yellow as they get all the... Some yellows came in there, but this used to all be purple. Really beautiful looking snake. All right, look at this yellow belly female. Sometimes it's cool just to have a single gene. I've had her for a while. She didn't breed last year. I really didn't pair her up very much. She looks like she's going to ovulate, but she did eat two, two um, big or medium rats, I should say. So I've been pairing her with what I believe to be an orange dream and she hurricane freeway. I want to try to prove out that hurricane. And sometimes it's hard to see with the freeway and all the other genes mixed in there. I'm pretty sure it is. So she's yellow belly. So we're going to either get ivories 50% or 25% of the time, 25% will be freeways. And we should be able to see the hurricane gene somewhere along there because because invariably she's only going to throw one copy of yellow belly so we should get some regulars and in the regulars we should get some kind of hurricane 50 percent of them should be hurricane so if i see hurricane in anything then i know that that male was a hurricane freeway and that's really what i wanted to prove out so we'll see she's this is kind of sometimes you have to do these test breedings to prove things out uh, obviously we, if we hit everything and we hit the 
uh, Orange Dream, and she Hurricane Freeway. We're gonna make some really nice babies too. So that we can, you know, it's a higher odds, but she's a big girl, so she could produce a lot of eggs, which is gonna make it the the breeding experiment that much better. All right, and we'll wrap up today just showing you some females that are close to laying clutches. She's going into shed this ivory female, which is a super yellow belly. You can see she's kind of getting that bluish eye. She lost her white coloring. She's kind of got like a pinkish color. That's when they go into shed. And this is her pre-lay shed. So when they lay, when they do this shed, you count 30 days after this and then you'll see a clutch of eggs. So if I wasn't lazy, I would mark all these days. <laughs> and sometimes I just go by instinct. We kind of know when they're going and we check all the females, especially the ones that are look like they're ready to go every single day to make sure we don't miss a clutch of eggs. And uh, it's exciting. This is a good time of the year. We're going to start seeing a lot of eggs on the grounds over the next couple, probably days to weeks. And then we'll probably have a second surge probably in about two months. So some of the females are behind the other females. And I, I seem to be having two waves. And I might even have a third wave this year because we're going to probably start breeding some of the younger females now that these older ones have already uh, are ready to lay and don't need the males anymore so I, I could see definitely three waves of eggs this year so anyway exciting time once again and uh, once we start getting some hatching i think in the next two weeks we have some eggs in the incubator that are going to be hatching and that's also exciting because some of those are really really cool clutches and i think you guys are going to really like what we produce i hope i hope you like what we produce because sometimes you don't get what you want Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I always like to do little education videos, you know, especially if things are a little slow in the, in the facility. So you guys got to see what an ovulation looks like. You got to see what a, what a ridge, a, a very big ridge on a snake that's about to lay some eggs looks like. And you got to see some cool stuff that we have in the, uh, we have, uh, in the breeding projects this year. Once the girls stop eating, you know the eggs are on the way. That is your key. Don't get crazy if your snakes stop eating, because you know they're gonna go from eating two mediums a day every week, and then they're just gonna stop. And you know what? Sometimes, obviously, they're in shed, but if they stop, don't think like something's wrong or or maybe the, the snake's sick. If you've been pairing that snake with a male and you've seen locks, or even if you didn't see locks, more than likely she's gonna go and lay some eggs pretty soon. If she's laying on that hot spot, I can guarantee it, especially if she's not eating. So keep your eyes open, take notes. It's a learning process. The more you do it, the better you get at it, the more you can spot this stuff. If you don't see ovulations, you don't see these ridges, who cares as long as you got eggs on the ground. I didn't see anything the first couple of years. I didn't know what I was looking at. And then little by little, I learned. And now I can see things. And I have a lot more snakes now, so obviously I'm gonna catch ovulations. I'm gonna catch a lot more cues. When they're wrapping that water bowl, make sure you're feeding them and putting that mail in because that means they're preparing, you know, to, to ovulate. Uh, why they wrap the bowl, no one knows. And originally people thought maybe it was because they're trying to cool themselves. I just think it's because they're uncomfortable and they're trying to grip around something to kind of, you know, sometimes when you flex your muscles, you kind of relax that internal, you know, environment that's going on where these eggs are trying to pass through the, into the overdose. So that's just my theory. <laughs> All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit that like button. See you back tomorrow morning.